Today we're going to do something a little bit different. What I'm standing in here is a foundation of an old house and supposedly this house was built in like in the 1700s, mid 1700s and um, not sure how it disappeared or exactly when but it's gone now. There's a more modern house just off to the side here that was built prior to the American Civil War which is in the 1860s. So this is much much older, like 100 years older probably. People have dug in this foundation before. I was talking to the owner and he told me that a local historical society actually did a like mini dig out here some years ago where they set up screens and they screen the dirt and look for stuff and he didn't know exactly what they found but said they found a few things. As I'm looking around the foundation though, I'm seeing lots of nails and things. So that tells me that they didn't do a very good job screening yet there's still iron and artifacts in here. So I just want to give you a quick overview of what the site looks like. You can see this mounds of dirt here and this has all been pushed up by uh, uh, tractors and stuff over the years. So this is a working farm. This hole here looks like it was dug maybe by bottle diggers or something. You see they threw a bunch of rocks up there and there's some broken glass. But I was noticing when I was looking through here, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of course, a lot of this pottery, and that's probably not as old as the 1700s, but there's some square nails too. Look, here's a square nail. Uh, I think that's a rose head, so that's an old one right there. There's a bunch of nails through here. Well, look at this. These are all nails. That's been burned, so maybe the house actually burned down. That would make sense. These are all, these nails have definitely been burned. You can tell by the uh, kind of that red color. And I saw some more stuff over here. I think the foundation probably runs up this way. You can see it's uh, kind of mounted up here, but I think it's modern. There's an old well over there we're going to look at a little bit later too, but uh, you can see the rock. So what we're going to do is kind of dig in this area right here. We're going to set up a screen and kind of look around. Let's go look at this groundhog hole over here, see what he dug up. Whenever you're looking at sites, if you see a groundhog hole like this, look in the dirt that he kicks out of the hole. Because that'll give you a good indication of what's in the ground. I definitely have to wear some good gloves today. That's uh, window glass there. I don't see any artifacts, but it could be in there. Who knows? I smell a catnip. It's really strong in here. It's, uh, well, here it is. It's a bunch of it right here. It smells good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the screen up, and we'll pop the camera back on and start screening. Here comes a big plane. I should have turned my camera on like five minutes ago. Oh my gosh, I had a great find. I, I just started digging here. First thing I like to do uh, is to check the area, of course, with the metal detector. Make sure there's nothing, you know, just underground that I can hear and dig up so that I don't pile rocks on them or pile the, uh, the sifted dirt. And that's what I just did right here. I'm going to show you what I just found. It's freaking awesome. Uh, but I wanted to show you this first. Here's some bottles. I think these came out of uh, that hole right there, probably. I can see where it looks like they threw dirt up. But if you look here, I think that was dug up by a groundhog. That's where all those nails were. I showed you that were burned. And these are some broken bottles. These aren't that old, though. I didn't know about this one. Nah, see, that's not very old at all. But what I want to show you is this, the second target that I dug. I'm cleaning this area out right here because this is the what I wanted to start sifting. And I got a few signals in here, but it was just little pieces of, well, you can see there's lots of pottery in here still. So if this was sifted, it was not sifted very good. And I got a piece of flat uh, iron, kind of it gave a good squeak, but right here in the groundhog hole. And this is dirt that the groundhog kicked out. You can see how it's going around like this, and that's the hole right there. It's no groundhog hole. So he, he pulled the dirt out of his den and made this. That's a plate. Yep, that's exactly what that is. It is a belt buckle. Got the hooks on the back, so I already can tell you it's going to be a U.S. Because, yep, that's what it is. It's a later war U.S. belt buckle from the Civil War. Wow, let me clean it up just a little bit. Actually in pretty good shape. But being in a foundation, it's uh, likely it's not melted, which is unusual because I thought this house might have uh, been fired or burned because of those nails. But yeah, that's a U.S. belt buckle. You see, these are called arrow studs right here. These are the studs where it hook into a belt, and they look like an arrow. That's kind of a later uh, production. That's not the uh, puppy paw, which is like pre-war or early war. This is later war. <laughs> 
And I know for a fact a lot of people have been metal detecting here, and I don't know why they didn't take this. That was loud as can be. You must have thought it was a can, or the groundhog kicked it out since the last person was in here. That's a good sign. Place is loaded. We're going to go ahead and look around first with the metal detector. And uh, then we'll set, up, <laughs> we'll set up the screen. <laughs> Let me set this stuff over here. This is a little area that I've cleared that I put my good stuff on. And I got the bucket for the nails and whatnot. And we'll throw the nails in there when we get started. But let's look around here. You never know what else might be in here. But there's all kinds of nails in here too. So I don't think this was sifted very well if it was. Because they would have definitely gotten that out of there. That's a piece of wire. All right, I want you to hear what I'm hearing in here. I got the discriminator set on... Uh, Seven. Let's go ahead and bounce it down to almost zero so you can hear all the iron. Two plus sensitivity on 60. You hear all the iron in here. It might be something. That's where I found the plate right there. I didn't hear anything else in the hole. But see, there's no way. If there was anything buried, a button buried more than an inch or two, you might not even hear it in here. Oh, it's iron. See all kinds of pottery down there too. Oh, it's, um, that might be something good right there. Scratch this back just a little bit. Yeah, okay, let me go get that other shovel. Now set this down, I'll be right back with you. That's right where I dug the uh, uh, box plate. I came up here and got this signal and I showed you this signal. And as I'm digging the hole, I'm coming through a layer of charcoal. If you notice, it's uh, really black. And I saw some glass in here. There it is, that was melted, so... I'd say for sure this house burned. It's melted glass of some sort, probably window glass. But more importantly, do you see anything in the frame of interest? Like right there? That's a... a uh, a uh, crossbell plate, I do believe. <laughs> three, I dug three holes and I got two plates already. If that's a plate, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yes. Well, I don't know. It's kind of a little small, isn't it? What is it? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's a, uh, what's called a breastplate or a cartridge box plate. Or, not a cartridge. I'm all excited. <laughs> I can't talk. Crossbell plate. Oh, what is it? Yeah, it's an eagle. So this is a standard Yankee um, crossbelt plate, breastplate. It's <laughs> awesome. This foundation is probably paved with these things. Almost gave up on the signal too, because I uh, was finding all this melted stuff. I figured it's a blob of lead or something. And it's down on the rock. So it's down a good ways, about eight inches, and that's pretty good to be able to hear it in this stuff. Awesome. I don't know if we're going to get the screening or not. Not if it stays like this, that's for sure. I thought I had another plate up here by this groundhog hole. But when I kicked the dirt back, that popped up right there. That's a mason jar lid. Ball jar. But you got to dig these if you want to dig plates. And I'll dig these all day if I'm digging plates like that. Awesome. <laughs> Let's check out this hole. See, it's the old groundhog... Uh, Put anything up here. Oh yeah, that's a good signal right there. That sounds like a plate. A beer can. I almost hate to use the, uh, could be another lid though. I don't think it's very deep. I hate to use a shovel sometimes if you can just dig it with your fingers because you can always hit something with the shovel, but with your fingers you aren't going to hurt it. Probably need the pinpointer. Huh? See? Uh, aluminum lid to a an old beer can, which sound a lot like plates. Let's go over and compare the signals. We'll take this over here. I'm going to fill these holes in, but I'm going to leave them open for right now, because we'll probably sift this today anyway. So we're going to just do a quick test. I got the uh, cartridge box plate there, the mason jar lid there, and the aluminum uh, lid there for my beer can. Let's just see what they sound like and how they read on the meter. Kind of a squeak, squeak, squeak. 83, 84. That's an overload. That's a different sound, doesn't it? Not quite as high pitched. Yeah, pretty much the same, really. 
and the breastplate, same thing. So they're pretty much all the same signal. So I'm gonna have to dig them all. Of course, you really do have to dig all those kind of signals because if there's a little bit of iron or something on top, like a nail or a piece of uh, tin, you might get kind of a broken signal. It wouldn't sound like a really good signal, it's just kind of like semi good. So that's why you wanna dig some of the bad signals as well. Back at it. So I'm still working the area uh, first with a metal detector. And so far, all I've found is, well, all, <laughs> those two plates, and I'm getting a lot of leads. But I wanted to show you this hole over here I was digging. I got a big signal. It's kind of like an iron signal. But it's got a lot of pottery in it. You can see that there. And I think this is probably the iron thing I was hearing. I don't know what it is yet. But I'm concerned about this bottle, because you can see this bottle is not that old. <laughs> it looks like it's B-E-A-U, Bo. Looks to be in pretty good shape, so I'm thinking that this area right here was probably pushed in, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, you know, by the farmer with his tractor or something, because, um, I mean, that bottle just it doesn't look as old as some of the pottery that's on top of it. But it does look like a neat bottle. Let's see what it is. All kinds of stuff in here. Stuff a soda or beer bottle, I guess. Hey. She has a lot of uh, cans. That's probably what I was hearing was that stuff. Well, it's probably actually this, because that's pretty thick iron. That would give off a good signal. This might be a good place to dig bottles, too. I'd rather dig Civil War stuff. Knee high. I don't know that green stuff is. I wonder if that's paint or copper. Well, I have no idea how old this bottle is, but... Could be as old as me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely, I had green stuff in it. But that's beautiful, though. Good shape, huh? Knee high. We'll say that one. All right, we need to dig careful in here. Yeah, that's what I was hearing was this great big iron thing right here. I'll get the shovel and I'll pry it up and we'll see what it is and see what else might be down in here. I suspect it's going to be. Uh, yeah, a lot more stuff. Probably some good bottles down in there, I hope. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna turn the camera off for a minute. Still working on this hole here, and you can see, uh, I think that is probably paint or something out of a paint can that's disintegrated. And a lot of pottery, I got a battery. That's that's a lead core out of a battery. Another mason jar lid. This stone looks interesting. This looks almost like an Indian celt that might be broken, but I'm not sure. Uh, I like got some license plates in here and other junk. We'll dig around a little bit more. I'm more interested in the older stuff. Well, I mean, the older stuff was like right there, so and directly behind me, so I don't know where to <laughs> I don't know where to start. I don't think we're going to be doing my screening today, though. Unfortunately, uh, we'll probably just uh, keep digging like this as much as we can. There's actually some other diggers that come out on this farm, so once they hear what I found uh, here, it's going to be over for me. So <laughs> I need to keep digging. Hey, let me show you what I'm doing uh, now. I'm just whoa. I'm digging a couple different pits in different areas, kind of get try to get a feel for what we're dealing with here. This is the pit where I found the bottle, and I'm getting a lot of iron and stuff out of here, but some aluminum as well. So I'm thinking this is like 1900s for sure. I haven't gone down that far, but it's all like 1900s stuff here, 1930s, maybe 40s, 50s. Started digging this pit over here just to kind of test it. And I uh, got a lot more square nails over here. It actually looks a little bit better as far as older artifacts, although I did not find anything right there. I came down here to the groundhog hole. And that's where I found the first plate. And if you look at this layer, it's kind of interesting. Just, this tells us a little story, I think, about what we're dealing with. You can see the dark dirt here. That's just full of organic matter, like leaves and stuff that have rotted over the years. Then we get down to this layer here that looks like clay almost, little specks of white. And then you see charcoal, that's charcoal right there. And what we're looking at is the remains of the house right in this layer here that, that burned. The charcoal, of course, is the wood. Let me get a little closer. The charcoal, of course, is the wood. And this is probably the plaster, the white stuff, the plaster and the mortar uh, between the logs or the uh, lattice. Uh, so this is where the house collapsed onto itself. 
soil is kind of turning a neutral color here and I don't see anything in there so I don't really know if it goes any deeper but we're going to find out but the artifacts are probably going to be in this layer right here so what I'm going to continue to do is dig these out a little bit more we'll set up the screen and uh, we'll screen a little bit from each hole and see how old this stuff is and if there's any buttons that I'm not hearing with the metal detector because I am checking it but not finding anything other than like nails and big chunks of iron so uh, when I get the screen set up, I'll go ahead and show you what I'm doing. So what I've done is, is I've taken three buckets of dirt from the first hole where I found that first plate and put them in the screen. I took out the big rocks. I've seen a little bit of iron in there, but nothing good. Uh, we're going to do three buckets of this. Then we're going to go to the other hole up the hill a little bit further. And then we'll just go ahead and screen where I found the knee-high bottle. <laughs> knee-high to a tud frog. Ever heard that one? All right, uh, let's get to screening this. I'm not sure how exciting this is going to be for you, but uh, oh yeah, maybe I should put two buckets. Start with two buckets. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of pick through here a little bit, take out some of these bigger. Here's a bone. That's a rib bone from something. Probably somebody's supper. We'll pick out some of these big rocks and we'll throw them down there. And uh, we'll look for buttons and coins and anything else that might be interesting. Then we'll shake it down a little bit more. It looks like a pipe stem there, is it? Yeah, that's a pipe stem. Like a tobacco pipe from back in the olden days. All right. I think I'll go ahead and shake this a little bit more. Here's some iron. That's a nice old nail right there. A couple other little nails. What else do we have over here? Some more iron. That's a doodad there. What's that? Any idea? I think I smelled the glass, huh? Alright, nothing big, nothing shiny. Let me go ahead and shake it down just a little bit more. So this would go a lot faster if the holes were bigger, but if you get the holes too big, you'll lose a little button. You don't want to lose a button. Okay. I don't see anything good. Uh, I'm gonna grab the other camera. I guess probably good enough, I guess. Got some uh, nice pottery in here. That's pretty old. i put that to the side. I'll go ahead and take the nails out too. That way we uh, won't have to listen to them when we run the machine around here. Tell me if you see anything good. See any buttons? I'd be really surprised if we don't find at least something halfway decent. A lot of little bones. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that's where the house burned. And what we're seeing is the remains of what was inside the house. So it should be loaded with nails. I'm not seeing quite as many nails as I thought it would. But there are a lot of little ones in here. Is anything good? Nah, that's not too good, is it? Not a single keeper out of this batch. No shiny gold coins. Of course, it might be melted too. If they're in the ash layer there. Good likely that they would be melted. Yeah, I don't see anything good in this bucket. Alright, so what we're going to do is we'll dump this. You see my shovel is, that's where I got that. And then we're going to go up to the other hole there. I think that's about where the uh, brush plate came from. And we'll sift through two buckets of that. <laughs> Three buckets was just a little too much for me. See all these little roots here that uh, kind of clogs up the screen. And it makes it a little tougher. You can see how fine the stuff is that comes out on the bottom there. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything else in there. Alrighty, another bucket. I went ahead and put three buckets in here again. And uh, not quite as many roots, and we'll pick out as many of these rocks as we can before we start shaking. I did not see anything at all though, which is a little bit disturbing. Uh, just a couple pieces of iron, because normally if it's a good artifact layer, you'll see buttons and maybe a marble or two as you're digging. Uh, but we'll find out. Right now. <laughs> Get started. Go to the other camera. All right, we'll just kind of pick through here. I see that's kind of pretty. 
That's a pretty little piece of pottery there. I'm not going to save it though. That's a nail. Another nail. Those are old. That's a nice old nail. Um, could definitely date to the 1700s. I see anything good in there? Let me know if I missed something. I may. Yeah, see, not even that many nails, really. You know, a little bit of pottery and some melted glass. Not seeing that's melted glass there. Nail. Put this in the bucket. In the bucket. Oh no, he has my bucket. Yeah, I don't see anything good in here. What's that? Looks almost like it's uh, glazed, doesn't it? Really thick though. Yeah, it definitely is glazed. Must be the bottom off of something. And not a single little button one. Very unusual. Very unusual. I thought there'd be a lot of little buttons in here at least. Alright. Hi. We'll get, uh, we'll do a bucket out of the new hole. Two or three buckets. And then we're going to dig some different pits. Now I'm just going to do two buckets from the modern hole because I'm really not expecting to find much. Of course this will be the one that's loaded with mini balls. Uh, but everything that I'm seeing is more modern in here, you know, like less than 100 years old. So we'll find out. Get so those rocks out of there. Give her a couple shakes. see anything I'm gonna go ahead and switch cameras all right let's see what we have here uh, some ceramics a lot of nails pieces of can uh, it's an older nail I think it might be a couple round nails in here though you could never run a uh, or hope to find anything with a detector in here unless it was really big and right on the surface see all the nails those are those are round nails those aren't very old I'm not very happy with this this batch got some bones it's from somebody's supper. Yeah, I'm not happy with this batch. Alrighty, what do you think? I think what I'll do. Yeah. Definitely not very old. Okay. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna expand these holes a little bit, at least. Well, all three of them a little bit and dig around some more with a metal detector and sink some more shafts or little pits. <laughs> Two plates, that's it. It's the only keepers we found. That's amazing. And they usually come in three because there's a belt plate, a cross belt plate, and then a cartridge box plate that would have the U.S. on it as well. So that could still be in here or, or somebody else could have found it years ago. Hopefully. We'll find it today. So that's the area I was working back there and I decided to come over here and just metal detect a little bit. And I showed you this groundhog hole earlier where it's all piled up. And I got a good signal right here and I started digging. And the first thing I found was this pewter handle to uh, like a spoon. See it's broken, they often are. And then I found a bowl to a spoon. That looks like it might be melted, so that might go along with the fire. But there's a lot of square nails in here. I mean, there's tons of nails and stuff. But unfortunately, there's uh, modern stuff mixed in. There's pieces of plastic and stuff. So I don't know if the groundhog took plastic in the hole and then brought it up. Or this stuff would just all pushed around from uh, the neighboring yard. But what we're going to do is we're going to take two buckets of dirt over to the screen. Just screen it out and uh, see how old the nails are and how many they are and if there's any good buttons in there. This might be a good area to really check clothes because there's way too much stuff to, and the artifact layer is at least a foot deep and it looks like it keeps on going so let's do two buckets of dirt see what we come up with. The wind is really picking up so I don't know how the camera is going to work it's not noise so I'm going to try to make this quick. Uh, let's see what we have. Some big rocks, we'll go ahead and scrape them off. Here's some iron. This is like a sheet of iron of some kind, a bunch of pottery. Nothing gold, nothing shiny. 
Yeah, that's weird, huh? Everything I found today has been found with a metal detector. I've not found anything with a screen yet, which is very unusual. Well, anything worth keeping. Uh, just nails, all nails like this. Wow, that's strange. But those metal detectors are really good. They can, they can um, go right down through that iron and find the good stuff. And that's pretty much proof positive of it, of it what we're doing today. Just little chunks of uh, um, tin and stuff. Pretty little piece of pottery, but yeah, that's about it. Bunch of nails. Not a single button. Wow. Whew, okay. I guess we're going to be surface hunting again for a while with a metal detector. I was digging in this hole some more, and look, it went down into a cave. It's probably that groundhog lives down in there. That's probably his tunnel, whole tunnel. See, what they do is they remove all this dirt and they kick it out their hole. Just like he did right here. And you can see this is all mounded up. And that's all the dirt from down deeper. That's why I say you should always check groundhog hole uh, mounds. I don't see him, do you? It doesn't look like he's active at all. If you notice the hole is completely filled in there. Uh, well, there's a rock, modern rock that I threw on there, but... Uh, he would he would have had it cleaned out by now because it's February. In February, we're almost February, and it's mating season, so they're coming in and out of the holes already. So I moved from the hole over there where I just found a groundhog hole because I didn't find much else, and moved back to where I found that breastplate and I started digging. I just found another groundhog hole, another tunnel right there. Look at that. That's his entrance. Maybe there'll be some cool stuff down in there. We'll find out. I'm still digging along that groundhog hole right there. And I'm finding a couple of things. Looks pretty old, old stuff. I did find this piece of plastic down in there. So the groundhog is carrying this down in there, probably lining his, his uh, uh, nest with it. Found a top to a really old bottle. Now that's a good sign. And some old pottery and some poo. I put my hand right in the poo. That's probably groundhog poo, I guess. Um, so there's something live down there, but there's a lot of little nails in here. I think this rock right here is actually part of the foundation that runs that way. And it looks like there's a wall going that way, so it's probably another room right here. But this might be the, uh, the outside edge of the main part of the house. That's kind of what I'm thinking, and since I am finding some old glass and stuff, I'm going to keep digging right here for a few minutes and hope that groundhog will going to come out and get us. So I came back to this hole that had the modern bottle in it, the knee-high bottle. And I'm um, just digging it out. I do see another bottle in there. I haven't found anything else neat, although I did cut my finger really good. So I took one of my gloves off for a minute. Let's see what this thing is. If it's even whole. Oh, yeah. That's a nice little bottle. I guess we'll see that. Got some bubbles in it and some imperfections, which is nice. I don't know how it survived those rocks. <laughs> See some more stuff in here. It's just not very old at all. Yeah, it's not old. We'll dig around a little bit more in here. Then go back to metal detecting. The wind's really picked up, so I'm kind of filling in my holes now, getting ready to head out of here. Uh, but I'm kind of checking around the edges, and I think I just found a coin. It will be my first coin for the day. I've only found one button. Of course, those plates, but look at that. I just kicked it out of the dirt. I was kind of filling this back in, kicking the dirt in. Look, that's a large scent right there, isn't it? Oh yeah, nice and green. We'll just uh, rub it a little bit. I think it's gonna be in pretty good shape. Rub it on the old pants. I don't like to do this too much, but we're gonna have to. So you can see what it is. Yeah, I don't wanna rub all the patina off of that. So I would guess that's going to be like the mid 1800s. I try to clean it off a little bit before we do the wrap up and see what it is for sure. I'm not sure really. <laughs> it's a large scent though. Here's the back of the coin. You can clearly see the one scent. I'll flip it over. I can't read the date, but you might be able to see it on the video. Yeah, I'll take it. Number one for the day. I came over to fill in this other hole that I had dug. 
<laughs> I found another really cool thing. I don't know if you remember, this is the groundhog hole where I found the spoon, a spoon handle and a piece of melted spoon. So I'm kind of filling it in and digging a little bit as I go, and this thing just popped out of the ground. You know what that is? That's really cool. That is a complete colonial era shoe buckle. Wow. That would date to like the 1780s to 1800 or so, and they went out of fashion soon after that. When you find them in the field, you often find just the corners or just little pieces of them because they've been plowed up. This one hasn't been plowed up. Yeah, that's awesome right there. I love it. And this is right where I had the spoon set when I was showing it to you. And look at all the nails and pottery. I guess we should spend more time over here maybe. But I think this is all groundhog dirt right here from that hole. I think he dug it all out and put it up here just for us. Well, I guess we'll have to spend a little bit more time here. That's pretty cool. It really is. We don't find a whole lot of these over here in the colonies. And uh, usually they're just in pieces. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this groundhog dirt hole. And, uh, but I wanted to show you what we found here because it was actually pretty impressive. We got some beautiful pieces of uh, china. See figures on there. I'm definitely going to save that. And this is some nice old stuff as well as that. Here's some window glass. It's not melted. And uh, there's some bones in there. These are like soup bones or you know bones people, uh, animals they ate. And a lot of iron. Look at all these nails. And got a little buckle and lots of nails. And that's probably not even all of them. So I didn't pick them all up. But the point I wanted to make is that all the dirt came from this groundhog hole that was pushed up in this pile. Once I got through that loose dirt, uh, the nails and the relics disappeared. So there might be a beautiful trash pit down in that tunnel. So next time we come back, we're coming back, we're going to dig this groundhog hole out. Hopefully he's not in there napping. I don't think he is. Unfortunately, you can see there's a big pile of dirt here that the farmer pushed up, uh, but there could still be a nice trash pit right there. So we're going to look. This is part of the foundation here and goes there and out that way. It's a huge house. It actually goes way over to there and way over there uh, past my tripod and stuff. So it was a huge stone house. Mr. Groundhog, we're going to come visit you soon. Let's do the quick wrap up. I've got pretty much everything packed up. The tripod's away. We're going to come back and we're going to go over to that groundhog hole right over there and do some digging next time. But I want to show you what we found. We'll start with the good stuff first. Try to get the light good here for you. That, this is an eagle breastplate or crossbell plate worn by Civil War soldiers and, well, soldiers a few years before and a few years after the Civil War, but that's a really nice one. You can see where the iron is leaching through. These hooks right here are made out of iron, and this back is lead, it's lead filled, and the iron starts to rust inside the lead and it pops out. So that's not too pretty on the back, but the front is just beautiful. That's a beautiful eagle right there. It's almost perfect. This is the belt buckle and it has the arrow hook so we know it's a little bit later variant uh, probably war issue and this would have gone with this and there would have been another buckle that looked just like this except it would have had the two hooks on the back like this that would have been a ca cartridge box plate and it could still be out here or it might have been found years ago but they would be in the sets of three this is my large scent it's an 1840 i do believe not the best, but it's a, it's a nice one. One flat pot, and that's it. Usually when I dig these house sites, I have dozens of these. That's all we found today. And of course, this little colonial buckle. Most likely a shoe buckle. I'm going to keep some of these pretty pieces of pottery in this one little bottle that we found that was whole. And of course, the knee-high bottle, I'm going to keep that. I like this piece of uh, furniture right here. Um, I guess, like I said, that's off of some, I guess that's a keyhole right there. I'm not sure what this would have gone off of, but it's hand forged. That's really pretty. And, of course, lots of bones when you're in home sites. That's from where people had their food. This is my junk pile over here. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you, too. I'm going to put it all in the bucket. A lot of mason jar lids and uh, not too many of these, but a few. Some broken bottles, pieces of aluminum. Uh, that's a pretty neat hand forged um, hinge right there. We'll go ahead and save that. 
and this too I think the the owner of the property said he'd like to have some of those so we'll save those here's another keyhole this would have probably been on a door uh, we're going to save all this stuff I'll put it in the bucket where those nails so that's going to wrap it up for me today I hope you had a good time I sure did um, we're going to come back, probably not bring the screen since we found everything with a metal detector today. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Only 20% of my viewers have actually subscribed to me, which is kind of weird, I think. But um, if you get a chance, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like my video. I know this was a long one, but it was fun for me. So we'll see you on the next one.